Okay, next up in my series on the singularity, on hacking the singularity. Uh, they're taking our jobs and trying to figure out what, what will we do? What will be the jobs of the future? Do we need jobs? Uh, is, is, will we doing stuff? Is it a job? And that's that's, uh, that's the goal of today's talk. Uh, quickly, a, a, a hacker, when I say a hacker, I don't mean a bad guy. Uh, we're hacking uh, to make something cool. We're just trying to figure things out and see what happens. Um, and what's cool to me, what's cool, you know, we say, hey, dude, that ain't cool. It's because you, you obviously would have bothered somebody. And uh, I think Buckminster Fuller had the, the coolest line about uh, science and technology, that uh, technologists and scientists should leave behind technologies. I believe he called them artifacts um, that advantage all without disadvantaging any. And that's, uh, that's quite a goal. That, that's not easy. That's why it takes a scientist to figure this out. You know? uh, uh, so you could be manufacturing a great product. Uh, maybe it's a wonderful food or technology that lots of people love and enjoy. Um, but in the town where you're where you're manufacturing, you're poisoning the water supply or something or the air. So these are our goals. And uh, the singularity. A quick introduction here, if you don't. If you're not familiar, uh, a book by uh, Ray Kurzweil he used the term from physics uh, to describe when when um, well, the basic concept is, is built on kind of like Moore's law. Moore's law uh, and more of a guideline, perhaps. But um, uh, Gordon Moore noticed uh, that processors were able to double the amount of transistors every. Um, uh, Two years, and because the the uh, electronics had a, a you know shorter distance for the uh, electricity to move, the process speed was really doubling um, every year, or every eighteen months, or something like that. And uh, this is slowing down. It went on for many many years, but uh, it wasn't the first time we had that type of exponential growth. Um, we, we did it with uh, vacuum tubes, and, and Kurzweil calls this the law of accelerating returns. But basically, if you look at at, at a uh, exponential growth like process speed doubled. Um, and, and just apply it to humanity in general. You know, once a, a computer, we're building intelligences uh, that are, um, well, they're, they're going to be as intelligent as us. Now, I'm not necessarily saying sentient, and I don't know if they have feelings, but once a computer is, is as smart as a human being, it will help build a smarter one, and it'll build a smarter one, then they'll get smarter and smarter, and a, a much smarter computer could build a much smarter computer. And eventually, uh, far exceed human intelligence, and some people use the uh, the date of 2045, that's Kurzweil's prediction. Some people think that's modest, some people think that's a little optimistic, I don't know. I don't know. But I think it, it's something on target, and it is something we have to reconcile. And um, if you think we can stop, I disagree. I think the genie is out of the bottle. There is no going back, uh, from Watson to uh, I recently uh, bought a Google Home. Uh, I have uh, I built my, my daughter and I on a, on a uh, Raspberry Pi, um, an Alexa, and a Mycroft uh, AI. And I think Alexa's going to live, live with us. You know, we're going to Cortana next, and I think Google's even uh, um, offered to introduce some APIs for that. So um, we'll be, we're going to live with these entities. For a long time, and there's already bad ones out there too. If you think, yeah, but the technology can go wrong. Of course, it's going wrong. There are criminals out there, right? The botnets that they themselves can't control, and now these botnets are out there robbing banks for who knows? You know, it, it, they do all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, we know we've had problems, but uh, uh, we've also had some great stuff, and it's not going away. So, I don't think this is something you could do. Our choice isn't to have AIs or not have AIs. It's how do we deal with them. Um, and, and when you talk to people, or I, I talk to people, I notice uh, there, there, you get four basic types of opinions, and any one person, myself included, uh, can fall into every camp here. But you have doubters, the doubters that say, ah, it's not going to happen. The problem with that is computers will never blah, blah, blah. And, and I think they'll never get really human intelligence. Uh, they, they can get Vulcan intelligence if you're a Star Trek fan, but I don't think they could get human level intelligence. Um, but I think they get intelligent enough. That's enough to take over the world. Um, you have your utopians, Ray Kurzweil, and, and probably myself to the, to the greatest extent. Uh, I, I really think I mostly think this is going to be a wonderful thing. It's just an advancement in evolution, and life is going to continue to get better. And I think these AIs are going to make life – they're already making the highways safer. 
You know, uh, self-driving cars, uh, yes, they have accidents, and those accidents are, are scary. You know, if you're the guy who dies in that accident, it was like, that's luck. Those self-driving cars killed me. But most accidents won't be that way, and, and risk management will show us that they they, they do it better, and, and life is safer. Um, but then you have the dystopians. You have the people who just worry about the accidents. They just worry, they're going to go wrong. It's going to be like the Terminator, man. Uh, I hated that movie. <laughs> that was really dopey. But it's like whenever I watch aliens and they come here to kill us, I just don't think they're coming here to kill us. There's enough out there that there's no reason to kill us. I think they only want to learn from us if they're there. Um, but most of the pie here is sliced up to the uninformed. We just don't have enough information yet. You know, we're, we're learning. We're all learning. You know, I'm like a, a, a tadpole trying to describe what frog hoods look going to be like. I, I don't, I'm not a frog yet. I don't have legs. I, I don't know what it feels like to walk on land. I've never breathed air. Uh, but I, it's coming. I believe it is coming. Um, and uh, the reason we're here today, the, this conversation, I just want to look at the jobs. There was a uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper's uh, study came out earlier this year uh, saying how they predict by 2030, and this is 2017, uh, th that 38% of jobs will be replaced by, by robots. Um, and some people feel that number is actually quite optimistic. You know, the, the other way, you know, it might, might go much larger. Some people think 50% I've heard all kinds of numbers. Um, but this is a, a pretty extensive study. And they looked at a number of job fields, and some of were obvious to me, some weren't. And I said, telephone support, help desk, yeah, you're already talking to computers most of the time. And, and, and they're getting better. I called, uh, I had a problem with my car, and I had to call the insurance agency. And be honest with you, um, the uh, State Farm had a pretty good uh, uh, AI running that help desk there. Bartenders, waiters, and cooks, you know, you go through a drive-thru at McDonald's or something, or some <laughs> in inner city. I'm from the inner city. Uh, middle of the night, you know. Um, who would you want handling your food? Which <laughs> Our robots are... 99.999% guaranteed not to spit in your food. <laughs> so, but all kinds of jobs. Um, now, you think cooks? No, I'm not saying all cooks. I'm not saying all bartenders. You know, people come there sometimes to talk to the bartender. You know? um, but I think they will be replaced, most of them. Uh, most, you know, there are people who still ride horses, you know, but most people drive cars. Um, factory workers, we've seen that. Uh, drivers and, and even pilots, you know, uh, I wasn't even thinking that's one of the jobs I didn't anticipate. Of course, driver, they can see with self-driving cars, but they're saying pilots of airplanes will be mostly computer generated and AI. Journalists, there I wasn't suspecting it. But they said already so much of our news is already compiled by some AI that just takes sources and creates some type of, you know, uh, uh, lines of, of text there, you know, that with facts. And then somebody else is free to, you know, the reporter can read what the journalist wrote and add their color to it. Now, doctors, definitely a job I wasn't thinking. I'm thinking the low-skilled jobs that they say, no, doctors make mistakes. You know, they, they have to diagnose you. Now, there's a difference between, say, the emergency guy or you know, our surgeon has to take you apart versus the person uh, who watches your statistics uh, in a short time or over a long term and decides what's the proper uh, di diagnosis of where are you in life and what's recommended in diet and medicine. And an AI will certainly have a much greater uh, knowledge base to draw from and much quicker processing to, to figure that out. So, wow. So it's not just the, uh, the, the low tech skills. It's, it's any skill where it takes uh, maybe some knowledge, some, some research, and, and then the ability to, to reason something out. It can come to a, a next logical conclusion. Um, it's, that's not the same as the creative jobs. Creative jobs, I think, will always uh, be human. I, I, but how about politicians? Timothy Leary uh, wrote in, in the uh, 70s that he felt that the telephone changed the way we should be running our government. Uh, and so this is before we had computers in the house. So he was certainly a, a big advocate. For, as soon as uh, uh, Jobs and Wozniak created the Apple, he fell in love. But uh, he said that we have a representative government in the United States. We, we have people that represent our opinion. Because 
200 and some odd years ago when this system was set up, it took two, three weeks to get uh, your message from New York to Washington uh, via horseback. But once telephones came out, he said, we really could eliminate so many of the politicians if you just let me vote on my opinion as opposed to a person and say, this guy will represent my opinion. No, I'll just give you my opinion. Now, what if Watson took your opinion, took the, did the research, gathered the statistics of what the people really want, looked to design a, a political system that advantaged all without disadvantaging any? Now, that's 2017. The United States... Uh, and in many parts of the world, uh, there is a, a generation of children who grew up with computers and Google and GPSs. And GPSs have gotten a lot, lot better. You know, what is governance? It means, to, it comes from the Greek, govern. Come from the Greek, kaibanon. It means to steer. To, to steer a ship. And, and when you steer, the steer guy is, is real, literally the guy who gives direction. That's what our governors, our, 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 our politicians, they're supposed to give us direction. They're supposed to make it a set of direction for us that makes sense for the people. I really think that these children today would much rather have a computer like Watson, take their opinions, process the data, and come up with a plan than these bozos that we often see that can't get anything done in our, in our uh, uh, political systems uh, all over the world. All over the world, the youngest generation today is going to be, I think, just totally intolerant of us old folk and our stupid uh, rules that, that really don't apply. You know, I have, I have two daughters, and my one daughter uh, had made a comment years ago that I at least semi had a clue. <laughs> about how cell phones work and, and and social media, and she said that uh, her 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 friends often have parents who make up rules about how they're supposed to manage their time on their social media, and they have no clue, and they just pull things out of their tochus. Uh, so, I think Leary's idea of we could get rid of most politicians is right on target more than ever, and I personally think they would make much better governors. I don't know about 2020, but who knows? If you're living in, if you're watching this in 2017 or 2018, I, I think you uh, understand where I'm coming from. Here. What will people do, though? We're creating. Uh, Neil Bostrom used it. it was Neil who said uh, the last machine that humans will ever need to build, because then the machine will build everything. You know, of course, we've got to supply it with uh, resources. We've got to supply it with uh, uh, you know, raw material, and we have to supply it with, with energy. Uh, but even that's getting, getting easier. Uh, nanotechnology, we might be able to create anything. Who knows from anything? Um, so, well, we could create new jobs. It's just like you know the Luddites and stuff, and people were worried, oh, well, with this uh, cotton gin, or, and they, they, so we're, we're not going to have jobs. Well, no, new jobs came in. You know, when, when, when cars took over and horses uh, you know, phased out, there were new jobs to, to replace the, uh, the horse shoers and stuff. Um, and I think it's the creative jobs especially. I, I can't, you know, uh, I'm an amateur musician, and I uh, played in bands for 30-some-odd for, uh, years. And I can't imagine a computer singing um, a, a song with passion, with real feeling. You know, I can't even imagine it appreciating the music. I can't say, that was really good. Play that again. I want to hear that song again. Man, it's my favorite song. I can't stop singing it. You know, I, I can't imagine it. Um, and that, that's the sentience versus, versus uh, uh, intelligence. I don't believe that they'll become sentient. Uh, I, though, you know, to take that aside, I think that's not what Kurzweil points out. He thinks that what we'll do is we'll um, add sentience to it by mixing our bodies with the uh, thing. Um, but maybe uh, we also should just think about paying people just to be there, like covering everybody's at least basic needs. I don't know that everybody has to get a uh, you know a mansion to live in, you know, but uh, there's no reason today, and certainly a, a generation from now, 
that anybody on earth will have to go homeless or starve uh, or go without health care basically these things we can cover this um and uh a lot of this is is basically singularity people have done a, a number of if you want more for google post-scarcity economics um but a great quote that some of these guys in post-scarcity economics came from uh, jean-luc picard i'm a big star trek fan that the acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives we work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. And I think that's uh, right in line with her, to advantage all without disadvantaging any. And it reminds me of, of uh, Maslow's hierarchy and needs, which I've covered in a couple other talks. But um, the, to me, what the robots will do will take care of our basic needs. They'll, they'll uh, uh, you know, make sure that we, we, we get good health care, that they, that, um, we have food on the table, that we have a place to live. As far as providing the love and belonging, well, I know some people are, are into having love bots and stuff like that, and I think that market will grow, you know, um, especially if people start, like, transplanting themselves into these robots, as Kurzweil points out, we'll, we'll start merging with the machines. Um, but the higher level things, the higher art, and I used to, some, some artists that I, I have a ton of artists you could place up here, but uh, loved Earth, Wind, and Fire when I was growing up. They always sung about some really far out concepts here. And uh, I'm probably the, one of the uh, last living um, Fred Astaire, Ginger Roger fans. I absolutely love their movies. I've watched all of them many, many times. Fantastic art to me. And uh, I, I don't agree, by the way, that she could do everything he could do backwards in high heels. I do agree. Or I do believe I, I put forth, I should say. I don't know if anybody else talks about this, but um, the movies that he did without her are not nearly as good. Most of them. There's a couple here and there that had some great scenes in them. But um, as a romantic lead, I don't think there was any other woman that really convinced me that she actually liked Fred other than for his dancing. But together, those two work. And, and the, the, uh, the chemistry between them was a lot of his humor worked on her and her uh, her sour feelings. So it was pretty funny. She played the hard woman to his, uh, his joking attempts. But great stuff, great stuff. And I, again, I can't imagine a computer doing this no, for high art. And, and that's what I think more and more we're going to see, the creative things. Do I know any of this will take place? Of course not. Um, anything can happen is what people say. And... Um, I just happen to feel that there is an order somewhere out there. I, I don't know how to explain. I'm an agnostic. Uh, but uh, I like the quote from Einstein that uh, he was actually arguing about the, the quantum physics and, and its chaos, uh, basic look at things. And he's just, you know, everything's random chance at some point. And he's, he couldn't accept it. Now, much has been said about how, what Einstein meant by this. I don't know that uh, he was a, a theist by any means. He was a scientist more than anything. That's, I, I, I like to say I got Kirk and Spock on my shoulders. Whatever Spock can prove, uh, true or false, scientifically, I go with that. But um, when things are up in the air, there's a Kirk in me that goes, I feel God does not play dice with the universe. Fine. All right, that's all. I hope this was helpful to anybody. Have a great day.